Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 3. Philippians is a, a very small book in the, in the back of the New Testament, and it's only four chapters long, and it's one of the most encouraging books in the whole of the Bible. It was written by the Apostle Paul, and it was written to a church that, that he loved very, very, very much. And... I'm going to be reading from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16, and this is what it says. It says, I do not mean that I'm already as God wants me to be. I've not yet reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it to make it mine. Christ wants me to do that, which is the reason he made me his. Brothers and sisters, I know that I have not reached that goal, but there is one thing I always do, forgetting the past and straining toward what is ahead. Keep it trying to reach the goal and get the prize for which God has called me through Christ to the life above. All of us who are spiritually mature should think this way too. And if there are things you do not agree with, God will make them clear to you. But we should continue following the truth we already have. Pray with me. Jesus, we need your strength this day. It's no different than any other day. We need your strength this day. Open the eyes of our hearts. Open the ears of our hearts. That we might see and hear you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Stockbroker had done really well in the stock market. Oh, he had piles of money. And he, he wanted to, to purchase some things that were symbols of his success. He bought a brand new Rolex watch, $20,000. It was gorgeous. He bought a brand new Lamborghini. Oh, it was beautiful. He, first time that he took it to the office, he was hoping to get in the parking deck, but the parking deck was full. Instead, he had to park on the street. And as he opened his door, wham, a truck just knocked the door of his brand new Lamborghini off. And he jumped out and he started screaming, my Lamborghini, my Lamborghini, my brand new Lamborghini. And that's when a cop that was standing right there, he says, your, your Lamborghini, nothing. He knocked your arm off. The guy looked down at where his arm used to be. And he said, my Rolex, my Rolex, my beautiful Rolex. <laughs> I like that story because sometimes we get things out of priority, don't we? Sometimes we start majoring in the minors and we get things upside down. Paul is writing to a church, maybe the most encouraging letter in the whole of the Bible, and he's, he's, he's trying to build them up. He says things like, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. He says, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. He says things like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. He's saying this while he's sitting in jail, encouraging the people who are free. And in that encouragement are these words that we read this morning, words of priority. He says, 
in right here in, in verse 12, there's one, in, excuse me, in verse 13, there's one thing that I always do. That's priority. Forgetting the past and straining forward to what lies ahead. The one thing that he always does is he forgets. For a lot of us, that's, that, that's pretty easy. But, but Paul's saying, no, remember to forget. Remember to forget. Culver Academy is a, a school in Indiana. And they have a long history of educating young men and women. And they walk away very disciplined, very strong. And Culver Academy has a tradition that at graduation, the graduate walks across the stage, shake hand, shakes hands with the commandant, receives their diploma, and then symbolically they go through an arch. They open a gate to go through the arch, and there's someone standing on the other side of the gate. And on the other side of the gate, they say, remember to close the gate. Remember, close the gate. To remember that, yes, this is a, a high achievement, but close the gate behind you. This isn't the end. This is the beginning. Keep moving. Keep going ahead. Forget what lies behind and, and press on to what lies ahead. It's a wonderful symbol. Close the gate. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. And the first thing that I want to talk about is close the gate to bitterness. If anyone had cause to be bitter, it's the Apostle Paul. Five times he'd been beaten with whips. Four times he'd been shipwrecked. Three times he'd been beaten with rods. And one time they threw rocks at him until they thought he was dead. And now he's in prison. This idea that, you know, you follow Jesus and you're going to wind up healthy, wealthy, and wise and everything's going to go great with you, that's just not so. Sometimes life gets harder. Sometimes the things that we fear will ha might happen, they actually do happen. But it's the power of the risen Christ that says those things that you might fear, they might happen, but after all, it's nothing to fear at all. That we're not alone. And the apostle Paul the Apostle Paul, where, where if, if he went through and he, he practiced all the things that had happened to him, you bet he would be bitter. But that's not what he does. He closes the gate. He closes the gate to the bitterness. He doesn't practice. He doesn't rehearse. He doesn't go over it again and again. Barbara Brokoff told a story about a, a home in North Georgia. Beautifully manicured lawn. The house was painted. Flowers everywhere. And one more thing. Great big pile of trash in the front yard. Well, it wasn't a pile of trash that one day the owner would, would have hauled away. No. It was a pile of trash there that was to be on display. It was a, it was a rusty pile of aluminum and the owner had put a sign in front of it. And had lighted the sign to make sure that people could see it day and night. And the sign read, this is Alcoa Aluminum Siding, 30-year warranty. It's junk. That they were willing to trash their own home, their own property, the place where they lived in order to get even. In order to practice the bitterness. It's an amazing thing. But the way we are naturally made is it's easy to practice the injury, the slight, the hurt, to practice it and to rehearse it and to trash up our own lives with it. Sometimes we pin it on God and the things that have happened it separates us from God because we rehearse it and we practice it and we go over it. Sometimes it separates us from other people. One of the things I enjoy is meeting with couples before a wedding because they rehearse the very best things in their lives. Ask them how they met and, and usually there's a story to go along with it. They talk about how they fell in love. 
And together, we, we practice how they're getting ready for that next memory, the wedding. And in that wedding, it, the, the hopes are there for a, a, a memory that'll be stamped, that they can rehearse and practice. And it's a, it's a positive and it's a strong memory. But very often, very, very often after that comes an injury or a slight, a hurt that people rehearse, they practice. And it's the hurt, it's the slight, it's the injury that, that becomes the predominant story. And they begin to, to decide who's right and who's wrong. And it's that slight, that bitterness that trashes up all of life. Well, it's not just married couples. Sometimes it's a child or a parent friend, an organization, even a church that Paul says close the gate. Close the gate to bitterness. The one thing he says that I always do is I forget the past and strain toward what lies ahead. We don't have strength to do that on our own. But hear the good news this morning. Jesus does. And a life in Jesus Christ is one where we close the gate to bitterness. But that's not all. Close the gate to pride. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, this is what he writes. He says, I was circumcised eight days after my birth, and I am from the people of Israel and the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew, and my parents were Hebrews. I had a strict view of the law, which is why I became a Pharisee. I was so enthusiastic, I tried to hurt the church. No one could find fault with the way I obeyed the law of Moses. He's reading his resume. He's, he's opening up. He's showing his trophy case. He's reading off his accomplishments. All those things that he had reason to be proud of. That the Hebrews, they, they took pride in being the chosen of God. And not only was he Hebrew, he was from the tribe of Benjamin. And it was that tribe of Benjamin that the first king of Israel was chosen from. He was from royal blood. Not only that, his politics, he was a Pharisee. He lived more disciplined, more achievement, higher than all the others. And there was no one who could measure up to it. This is a trophy case. This is a resume. This is a list of accomplishments. But listen to what he does with it here in verse verse 8. He says, I count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. That whatever it is we put on the throne, whether it's an accomplishment, something that we're proud of, or a resume that tries to push Jesus off the throne. And, and he says, I take those things to the dump, those things that, that, that people would, would, would be most proud of, and I take them to the dump. I throw them away. I close the gate to them. I put them behind me in order that I may gain Christ. Well, I think there's a, a new kind of pride it used to be that, that, that pride was an accomplishment of, of being holy or being counted among the saints. But I think there's a new kind of pride that's crept into our culture. It's a pride to not be counted with the saints, but instead to be counted with the sinners. And to look across the fence and say, well, at least I'm not judgmental like they are. At least I'm tolerant of everybody, not like they are. And the new pride is a pride of being non-judgmental, a new pride of being tolerant and being counted among the sinners. Well, Jesus, Jesus doesn't count us to, 
call us to be either holy or non-judgmental. He calls us to be both. That you and I, you and I, we're nothing more than sinners saved by grace. But hear this, we're nothing less than children of God. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the, the power to become children of God. It's not power that we have on our own. It's not our accomplishments. That it's the power of the risen Christ in you and me that calls us forward to the holiness of the living, living Christ living through us. But it's by his grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not a result of works that no one should boast. That what Jesus did on the cross, he took our guilt, he took our sin, he took our shame, and he took our pride. Whatever that pride may be, and he nailed it to the cross once and for all to take away its power. John H. Holliday was founder of the Indianapolis News. And one day he was reading his newspaper. And he saw that the word height was misspelled in there. Height, H-E-I-G-H-T. Somebody left out the E. And he was, he was bothered that not only had they left out the E, that that the person who'd proofread it didn't catch it. So he underwent an investigation to find out who it was who wrote the article and who it was that proofread it. Well, the investigation turned up that he was the one who wrote the article and he was the one who left out the E. Well, as the founder, as the owner, and as the, the head of the newspaper, he then declared that from that point on, any time the word height was printed in the Indianapolis News that the E would be left out. And for 30 years, the newspaper misspelled height. Pride sometimes makes us do silly things, but most often it calls us to do the most devilish things, to separate us from God, to separate us from one another, to divide us. Jesus has more for you and me than that. He died on the cross to take, our, to take away our pride and to heal us, to make us like him. To make us like him. Close the gate. Close the gate to pride. And not only close the gate to pride, but close the gate to failure. Edgar Dwight Jones tells a story about a, a time where he was preaching and at the end of his sermon he invited people to, to receive Jesus. He said that this huge lumbering man came running down the aisle toward him with tears streaming down his face. He grabbed his hand and began to shake his hand and he said, preacher, you said tonight that God could save anybody no matter who they are or what they've done. I want to believe that. I want him to save me, but I want you to know I've, I've done everything. I've done it all. I've broken Ten Commandments, all of them. I'm a Swedish blacksmith by trade, and I've been a terrible sinner. I don't know whether God can forgive, can help me or not. Edward Dwight Jones looked the man in the eye and said, Tonight you're in luck. God's specializing in Swedish blacksmiths. I don't know where you've been, and I don't know what you've done. But I do know the power of Jesus Christ. Where, wherever it is that you've done, wherever it is that you've been, whatever has been done to you, Jesus has healing power that, that you and I don't have to, to, to wipe away, to cast away all our failure. What, what the psalmist says is as far as the east is from the west, the problem is, is that you and I go hunting for it. We practice it, we rehearse it. We go over it again and again and again. Jesus has more for you and me than that. 
He died on the cross to forgive us. And he rose from the grave to give us strength to close the gate, to forget what lies behind and press on to a life, a life where Jesus lives his life through us, where we walk and live in Jesus Christ. This morning, it may be that you've been practicing the most hurtful things and that you feel a nudge, you feel a shake, you feel maybe a thump on the head that Jesus has called you to something more and that tonight you want to invite the power of his Holy Spirit to live his life through you. Well, I want to pray with you. Pray with me now. Jesus, this day, give us strength we don't have that the power of your Holy Spirit might give us strength enough to close the gate to the failure, the failure that we've been practicing. Or it may be that uh, there are those that have been practicing a pride, a pride that says, well, at least I'm not like somebody else. A pride that um, divides us. A pride that divides us from you and keeps us from leaning on you and relying on you and trusting in you. Instead, it trusts in our own accomplishment, even our accomplishment to be non judgmental and tolerant. We need your strength. And Lord, not one day, but this day, breathe on us the power of your Holy Spirit that you close the gate to pride or it may be bitterness that there's a relationship, a relationship you intended us to have, but instead we've been practicing a hurt or an injury or a slight. We need your strength to close the gate to the hurt, to the injury, to the slight, and to press on. To press on as we, we walk with you, as you live your life through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.